Hello everyone um, and welcome uh, to my channel. Uh, my name is Sayam Pathak and I'm a CNCF ambassador working as director of technical evangelism at CIVO. Uh, so welcome to the CICD week. Finally, uh, today is 8th of November and it is happening. So I and Oleg uh, have been cooking this for uh, quite some time now. It's been it's always difficult to organize a complete week, to be honest, uh, because, you know, at the same time, like every day, 8 a.m. PT on the same channel, you will be learning about a new tool. It's it's very easy to say, but it's super hard to, you know, uh, get all the stuff, uh, stuff getting together. So it was at last minute, everything got finalized, uh, even even one of the speakers. Uh, so that was that was pretty good. Jason was pretty awesome because he just said, OK, I'm, I'm up for it. And uh, his is the first one. He said, I'm up for that. So because you know he's he's awesome so he can do anything so he he was okay <laughs> he's yeah, I I'll, I'll, I can do it no issues with that uh so yeah it's it's been uh, pretty good uh, and today we are here uh, with our first uh, session with our first episode which is based on uh, tecton and uh, we'll be learning about tecton today so whole week we'll be learning about a new tool every day 8 am pt um, on the same channel so today we'll be learning about uh, tecton and I'm joined by Jason. Obviously, uh, you all know if you're in the community space, uh, you know, all the fancy stuff that he has been uh, up to. Uh, he is great. You should definitely check out his Twitter, all the blogs, all the GitHub uh, repositories. He's been doing some crazy stuff uh, with Kubernetes. So I think uh, that's that's pretty rad stuff uh, that, that he's doing. You should definitely uh, follow him and, you know, just um, see what he's doing. It's, it's, it's cool. So uh, with that, uh, Jason, like, yeah. A uh, few other things. Um, last moment, CD Foundation agreed to sponsor some swag. So yes, there will be swags in the uh, in the stream. So five people will be winning the swag. Very simple to enter. Just uh, fill this form that I am pasting in the link. Uh, so you just have to fill the form in, and um, I get the details, and we pick five random winners uh, at the end of every stream. So five people uh, will be getting the swags, uh, and directly from the CD Foundation, you will be getting some codes for socks, something like that, and uh, which is cool. I mean, there was nothing, and now there's something. So I'm I'm really happy with that. So with learning, you get some free, free cool goodies. Uh, also, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of live tweeting, and we do we do it uh, especially with the weeks, uh, like when we did the K Native series and the WSL series. Uh, the Twitter threads were very famous, and they they were really good. And the speaker and myself, we feel so good uh, reading that. You know what you people have learned throughout the session. So please do that. And, you know, uh, if you are here for the stream uh, for learning, then please tweet about Tecton, what you are learning from Jason today. And uh, we'll be super happy to, you know, read uh, what, what you are learning. So live tweeting of the threads are always great uh, stuff. And obviously people who do not uh, watch it, they also get the gist of, you know, what was there. And then they go back and see the whole episode. That's how it is. Um, you know, it works. So please do that and please fill out the form so that you do not uh, miss the swag giveaway, uh, you know, uh, chance. Uh, so, yeah, without wasting any time, uh, Jason, uh, over to you. Please introduce yourself to the community. Thank you. Hi. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm Jason. Uh, if you get a chance, if you do win the socks, there are Tecton socks. They're beautiful. They're wonderful. I have some. I'm not wearing them today. But uh, if you get if you get the Tecton socks, uh, they're great. Um, yeah, my name is is Jason Hall. You can find me at I'm Jason H basically everywhere, uh, or at Jason Hall at RedHat.com. I work at Red Hat. Um, yeah, uh, uh, Siam asked me to come and talk about Tecton and give a, a, a brief sort of high level overview of uh, what it is, what it does, how it works, and so that's what we're doing now. Um, do you want me to? Oh, there we go. Yeah, perfect. Uh, like I said, this is a, an intro to to Tecton. Um, Please feel free to ask questions in the chat. I'll I'll try to uh, see them and answer them however I can. And if not, we'll get to them at the end. Um, uh, but yeah. So let's start with what is Tecton? Tecton is a project to bring CICD uh, primitives to Kubernetes, uh, to Kubernetes platforms. It uses custom resources or custom resource definitions very, very heavily to do this. We define our own types uh, to describe these, these pipelines that I'll show you in a minute. Um, and then they run on the Kubernetes cluster themselves, uh, which has some benefits, which we'll also, th also talk about. Um, Tecton is a continuous delivery foundation incubating project. You can learn more about the continuous delivery foundation at cd.foundation. I, I believe you will probably hear more about the CD foundation throughout this week uh, during CD week. Um, 
Tecton is a number of sub projects. We have uh, the, the sort of main core one is Tecton pipelines, which I'll, I'll go into more detail on, but there are a bunch of other things, uh, which I'll also talk about uh, uh, triggers and CLI and dashboard and things like that. Um, pipelines, I tried to boil down pipelines into as few words as possible, and this is how few I was able to make it. Um, pipelines provides reusable parameterized tasks where you can say, this is a little like chunk of work. Uh, I can reuse that chunk of work to do uh, the same sort of thing different ways. Uh, you can assemble pipelines out of those tasks. You can say, do this and then this and then this, or do these things in parallel, and then at the end, do these things. Um, when you execute those tasks, they execute as pods in your Kubernetes cluster. So that's what we mean by a Kubernetes native CI CD platform. Um, there are a number of other CI CD tools that run anywhere that that run in different places and could conceivably run in Kubernetes, but Tecton is sort of mainly and only focused on running on Kubernetes because at the end of the day, all of the task executions just start pods in the cluster and, and run there. Yeah, just uh, <clears throat> can you go back to the slide? Yeah, yeah just to uh, let people know, like, um, you know, yeah, the exact question that um, our dude is asking, like, what are the prerequisites to attend this session? So basically, um, you should be familiarized with uh, Kubernetes concepts uh, because what is Kubernetes is, is essential. Uh, and if you want to learn about Kubernetes, then cvo.com slash academy, where myself have designed the whole course free of cost, no credit card required. So you can learn uh, that uh, course. Uh, and uh, um, also, the CI CD is continuous integration, continuous delivery, just the basic definitions you should know, uh, you know, uh, what, what those are. And the CRDs, custom resource definitions, are the extension to Kubernetes. Uh, just for example, you have a pod, uh, pod as a Kubernetes object. So you can have your own uh, objects with uh, when you you know, create your operators and you define the CRDs, you can create the custom resource and you can give kind as the custom object and natively use that with uh, your uh, community. So the operators will be watching uh, for a particular um, kind of object and they will respond uh, with respect to that, like, you know, creating the pods and doing uh, X, Y, Z changes. Uh, so those are, you know, some of the stuff that I think you should be knowing before you dive into Tecton. Yeah, Tecton, it's 101. Like we'll be, I mean, Jason will be telling about Tecton, uh, but Kubernetes, and its basic concepts uh, should be kind of known. Yeah, uh, uh, good question. Um, yeah, also uh, curiosity, right? Like e even if you don't know everything about uh, Kubernetes, nobody does. Uh, if you're just curious about it and, and willing to learn more, uh, that's great. So um, really briefly, why would we build on Kubernetes? Why would we build uh, Tecton on top of it? Um, the main things that were useful and exciting to me when we started Tecton was uh, Kubernetes sort of takes care of a lot of this stuff for us. Um, it handles node management, it handles compute, uh, uh, you know, resource management, and uh, handles scheduling workloads onto that available pool of compute. Uh, the product that I worked on previous to Tecton was Google Cloud Build, and probably three fourths of the code in Cloud Build was node management and putting work on those nodes. Um, and so being able to just platform on top of Kubernetes and say like, you take care of it for us was was super, super great and let us focus on um, all the other stuff. Um, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Tecton heavily, heavily uses CRDs, um, which is a way of extending the Kubernetes API server to, uh, uh, to let it do sort of anything. Uh, we get out of that an API server that stores data for us, that enforces RBAC, that enforces um, uh, validation and things. So that was another sort of thing we just got out of the box. We didn't have to build this like, you know, robust storage layer. We already had etcd. Um, and then on top of that, just a huge long tail of things that just people in the Kubernetes community keep improving about Kubernetes. There are um, people, you know, heavily focused on making uh, Kubernetes more secure and more performant and more observable and more portable across platforms and across clouds. Um, there's a bunch of people working on making better client tooling, tons and tons and tons of stuff that Tecton itself benefits from without ever having to like do any of that, right? As, as Kubernetes becomes more secure, Tecton becomes more secure because, you know, that happened underneath us. So that's, I, every time I talk about why we build on Kubernetes, it's always a hundred reasons, many of which we never care about because other people 
do that for us. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, a quick uh, a quick dive into the architecture of Tucktown um, because I think it will be useful for understanding uh, a bit how it works. So uh, this is where a bit of uh, uh, knowledge about how Kubernetes works will be useful, but I, I'll try to I'll try to um, go slow. And if anybody has questions, I can I can um, take those. So uh, first, we define a task run type, uh, which which just says like Kubernetes uh, let people create objects of this type. Um, and when a user gives one of those to the Kubernetes API server, it stores it in etcd, or it, it does like uh, off checks and says, who are you? What are you allowed to do? Are you allowed to do this? And then assuming all of those pass, it writes it to etcd. Um, before it does that, actually during that process, it calls out to a webhook process that Tecton runs that that does more validation, that does extra validation and says like, is this a valid, you know, is this something I could even process if I needed to? Um, so we do a couple more webhook validation checks there. And then assuming those pass, stored in etcd. Um, Tecton runs a controller job that is long running that just watches for updates uh, for new task runs and for updates to task run objects. and when that object is created, the API server notifies our controller. Our controller uh, figures out what to do uh, based on that event. And nearly every time, uh, what to do is create a pod, uh, which is the, the sort of core unit of execution functionality inside a Kubernetes cluster. This is like run an image with these args to do some stuff. Um, so you created, the user created a task run, and we validated it and then found out about it and then created a pod, and we give that pod back to the API server, and it starts running in the normal way. So it gets assigned to a, a node in the cluster, it starts running, it pulls some images, it starts running those images, and um, uh, you know starts executing the work that you asked us to do. And that actually keeps going. So as that pod uh, proceeds and continues, oh, you can't see my, my mouse, but as that pod continues and proceeds and executes and eventually hopefully finishes, hopefully, hopefully successfully, uh, the controller uh, notices those changes and updates the task run to say your task run is, you know, three fourths complete. And now now it's complete and it succeeded. And here's what it did. So uh, that's the sort of main core loop of what we do in Tecton. Um, we get a task run, validate it, create a pod, watch that pod, update the task run and everything else works from there. Pipelines is the next sort of level up in uh, complexity. And pipelines basically work the same way, except instead of creating uh, pods, you give us a pipeline run, and we create a number of task runs that end up creating pods. And those bubble up into the, the pipeline. Um, this is a sort of uh, very, very simplified uh, pipeline that you might actually see in real life. So um, in this pipeline, you want to fetch some code uh, from a Git repo. Uh, in order to do that, we need to know the repository URL and the revision to fetch. So you need to you need to give us that information. That's what the arrow in is. Um, when that fetch is done, we do some unit tests on it, and then we will build an image from that code, and then we will scan that image. And then assuming that scan passes, you can um, deploy it to three regions. Let's say this is like a, a full example uh, pipeline. You can actually um, parallelize these. So the difference here is that this was doing unit tests and then building the image. You can actually have these two steps run in parallel. So after fetching, build the image and scan it. And then after unit tests, scan the image. Well, I guess that's that's not exactly meaningful, but uh, you can run these things in parallel at least. And then when it builds an image, it can emit from the pipeline, uh, I built this image. So even though the point of it is to deploy the image, uh, it can also give useful extra information about what happened during the pipeline, uh, which we can, which we'll talk about later. And it can also emit like I scanned an image and it was okay. So both of these little extra bits of information um, are things that the pipeline can advertise as it's running. Uh, this is a very very simplified pipeline. Tecton also supports all kinds of workflow features, like um, finally tasks, which are after all of the tasks have succeeded, or sorry, even if any of the tasks failed run this thing, usually for cleanup or some sort of notification. So even if the build image task failed, 
I would want to make sure that I notify Slack to say that uh, a pipeline was started or a when expression that says um, only deploy, only do the deployment step if the repo uh, that I'm fetching was from the deploy branch or something like that. So you can um, sort of have even more control over uh, over the workflow execution uh, using finally tasks and when expressions. I see a comment. Um, does Tecton use any inbuilt scanning tools for the container images? So Tecton doesn't, um, but it has. It Tecton is just running these tasks, right? It doesn't tell you what. Um, it doesn't make you uh, use any specific tasks, but you could give your or, or define your pipeline to say this is the scanning task I want. I I want to use, and there are a number of them in the in the catalog um, for common scanning tools. So. Uh, Tecton doesn't build any in, but some are available in the catalog and some would be available in the hub. Uh, and you can sort of pull those off the shelf and put them into your pipeline, um, however you want. Ooh, so there's on. another one. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, so basically, um, the, the we can say that the basic uh, unit of Tecton is a task. Uh, yeah. that a user will be creating and a user can create a task and you install Tecton, there'll be controllers that will be watching the kind task. And as soon as that gets created, it will, you know, do some checks, validations and create a pod to do the task and then uh, give you the result. Like uh, this task is completed with with so-and-so, whatever whatever the uh, execution was. Uh, but on the high level, uh, what, what the user will be creating is the pipelines and internally pipelines will be uh, comprising of many tasks and pipeline will execute that either serially or parallelly that option is also there as you mentioned uh, you can run the task in parallel and you can run the uh, tasks one one after the other uh, so the basic pipeline is is i mean that's that's kind of a very very straightforward and simple you know, deployment of uh, any application like you know it's 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 sitting in git uh, you run some unit tests obviously you need to build an image you cannot run uh, a pod without an image then you uh, scan that image if it's valid or not and then you deploy that particular application uh, cool looking pretty straightforward uh, till now yeah yeah uh, it gets better uh, so <laughs> um, we are going to talk about triggers um, in in the previous examples, all of this had to be done sort of manually. You had to you had to start you had to tell the system to start this pipeline and run these things. Um, and we're talking about continuous delivery here, right? We're talking about continue you know uh, constantly doing it on a schedule or on a on a uh, in reaction to a uh, to an input. So triggers is where we get to the continuous part of continuous delivery. Um, the way that you uh, define this is with event listeners and trigger bindings. Event listeners basically say, uh, I want to listen for events uh, from usually from the internet, let's say like a GitHub uh, webhook uh, endpoint. So you set up an event listener and say, I want to listen for events um, uh, at this URL or at, you know, if it's running inside the cluster, then you would have to expose that to the, to the uh, internet to receive those events. And then a trigger binding that says, the event payload, usually JSON, typically JSON, is um, includes bits of information that I want to extract. So, like for instance, that webhook uh, uh, message would say, "This is the commit SHA of the commit that I'm telling you about," and so we want to extract that and put that into the pipeline to start our pipeline from that from that commit. Um, and uh, Triggers is very flexible. Triggers is meant to be very uh, uh, non-prescriptive about how you uh, implement this because there are a lot of ways that people want to do this. Um, people can you can do it with regular Kubernetes services. You can do it with Knative services, which are. Uh, um, I mean, you've talked about you know, there was a whole Knative series uh, about uh, it's scale to zero and and very easy setup. Um, Tecton events. Um, oh, sorry, there was a question. Tecton events are based on. Uh, cloud events, yes. Um, uh, the the payload we use is effectively a, a cloud events, um, and we there's more work happening across the the continuous delivery foundation to sort of standardize the set of events that we use in not just in Tecton but in you know Jenkins and and Kepton is is also uh, coming this week. So there's a lot more uh, uh, work among these projects across these projects to get them all to standardize on the same sort of thing. Um, so yeah, so you can use um, uh, 
Kubernetes services, you can use Knative services, you basically anything you want with a URL as soon as as long as at the end of the day, it says this is the URL where you can hit me and tell me about these things. Uh, you can hook that into triggers and get that set up. So um, I think I, uh, it is a bit difficult to do. It is a bit more like you have to sort of assemble these pieces together and, and make that work. But the, at the end of the day, the goal is to make them as flexible as possible because not everybody wants to use raw Knative services. Not everybody wants to use Knative. We didn't want to require uh, certain things. So um, yeah. <clears throat> there are a couple other um, sub projects under Tecton I wanted to talk about. Um, there's a CLI uh, called TKN, which you can get on, on a Mac, at least you can do uh, brew install Tecton CD CLI. And that will give you a sort of more uh, tuned for Tecton CLI experience. You don't have to use it. You can also use uh, uh, kube control uh, regular, like it's a regular uh, Kubernetes client. So it's a regular Kubernetes API. So the regular kube control uh, client just works fine. Um, when I get to the demo, I, I tend to use kube control myself. So uh, you'll see that. Um, and I also want to talk about the dashboard, which is uh, a pretty cool. Uh, let me let me see if I can share it real quick. The Tecton dashboard. Are you seeing that? Where'd that go? Where'd you go? There you go. So this is a um, fully open source uh, uh, dashboard for Tecton that runs inside of your cluster. The one I'm showing here is actually our own dog fooding cluster. So Tecton, the Tecton project runs its own Tecton installation with um, with the dashboard and with all these things to drive its release processes and drive to drive its um, you know sort of day to day running of the project. So these are um, these are some of the recent pipeline runs we've had. This is just telling like when there's a pull request in the repo, make sure that it has the correct labels. Um, and so you can see, like, it started at this time and it ended, it took one second to execute this task. Uh, this is the stuff it's doing, just checking a regex in the GitHub command. Like, uh, yeah, that one's not very exciting. Let me find a better one. Um, YAML lint, same thing. We're just sort of running a, a, a linter across some YAML. Let's see if I can find a... See if I can find a failed one, actually. That'll be fun. This one has... It's another check PR labels, but they didn't put in the right labels. So we'll see some failures. Yeah. Um, there were no kind slash uh, uh, labels in the issue. And so uh, this check failed. So this is just another example of not, we're not only using uh, Tecton in the Tecton project for delivery of our releases. We're also using it for our day-to-day -day sort of GitHub uh, uh, issue maintenance and, and um, uh, yeah, day-to-day -day work. So that these are all the pipeline runs that have run. These are some tasks we have set up um, YAML lint, no op, probably does nothing. The, you can see these have all been running for a very, very long time, uh, or installed in our cluster a very, very long time ago. Um, some event listeners we have, the CI webhook. So, yeah, uh, I can go more into that uh, if there's if there's interest, but otherwise I will get back to uh, the presentation. Are we, there we go. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's, there's separate projects, uh, sub projects for the, the CLI that, um, I talked about and for the dashboard and a big area of interest, especially lately is in Tecton chains. Um, I, I always like to make the joke that supply chain security is so hot right now because it's a, a flaming trash fire that we are all trying to put out, uh, as fast as possible. So. Um, the way that Tecton uh, helps make this easier is um, 
the, the chains project basically runs another component in the cluster alongside the webhook and the controller that I, that I showed you before. Um, it runs this other component that just watches for all task runs in the cluster. It just says, tell me about anything that happens that Tecton, that, that Tecton did. And if that task run says it produced a container image, then um, the uh, chains controller will say, I know how that image was created. It was created by this task run. It was created at this time from this source from using these images. And it will attest all of that information and sign that, that information and say, I watched this happen. It was created this way. Um, and then uh, uh, publishes that um, using Cosign and some of the stuff from SigStore. I'm sure you'll talk to Dan tomorrow about uh, all of this stuff. So um, that gives you sort of a verifiable chain all the way from this image, this artifact that was created that might be running in production. You can ask, um, you can ask uh, Fulcio and Raycor for how was this built? It was built using uh, Tecton chains observed it being built from this source using these steps, you know, created by this user, all cryptographically signed so that it's uh, uh, hard to falsify. So chains is a really, really exciting uh, area. That's that's where actually um, the I built this image that I talked about from the previous uh, from the previous pipeline. That's what chains is watching for. It's watching for things that say I built this image. So um, yeah, ask uh, ask Dan all about this uh, all all tomorrow. Um, there was a really good, uh, if you missed it, there was a really good talk at Supply Chain Security Con uh, at KubeCon last month, where uh, Trevor Rosen from um, SolarWinds talked about how they used Tecton and Chains to run, they, they effectively run two parallel build processes on the same, uh, on the same inputs, and then have Chains watch both of them and make sure that both executions agreed about what was built. So if you manage to corrupt or infect one of those build processes, the other one wouldn't be, and they would disagree and you would get a big alarm bell that says like, you know, something's wrong, go look into this. Um, and it's much, much harder to, to corrupt and, and break both of them so that they both disagree about the right thing. So uh, yeah, the, go check out that talk. I'll, I'll post a link um, when I get a chance in this chat, um, but go, go bookmark that because that was a really good talk. Um, yeah, and we have some time for a demo now, um, or more questions, if there are more questions. Yeah, yeah please feel free to ask questions. Uh, I think Cosign is the coolest tool available as part of supply chain process. Uh, yeah. So uh, basically, uh, till now, what we have discussed is basically the, in the CI/CD ecosystem where Tecton fits in. Uh, it's a Kubernetes native CI/CD, uh, you know, which is in the end uh, using the Kubernetes power for scheduling and and bunch of other things are back and on all the Kubernetes power and uh, giving you uh, the pods that are running your task runs uh, eventually, which is you will be running the pipelines and eventually you are turning them into the triggers. Uh, so that you know you are watching or listening to some events which is happening and uh, doing the you know uh, continuous delivery on top of that and as Jason mentioned the CD foundation uh, and the projects are working together to even more uh, collaboratively work and bring the best out of experience for each of the projects which is which is really good to hear uh, I think that is that is pretty nice and uh, then you have uh, the supply chain security which is becoming really really hot at the moment in the whole ci cd ecosystem that is why we have the topic tomorrow on six store it's basically the supply, supply chain security and dan uh, uh, who better than dan can you know talk about uh, uh, stuff on supply chain security so that that is why we have him uh, tomorrow uh, i think that would be really interesting uh, thank you jason for touching on that uh, there's one question like um, can any other tools such as node tree be used in the process chain um probably i just don't know how uh uh so tecton chains is this this component that runs that watches everything in the cluster and and says if it says it produced an image go sign it um that component could certainly be taught to use notary uh in addition to or instead of cosign um but I'm not sure that anyone is working on that at the moment. Um, if you're interested in that, if that's something that uh, I assume you mean Notary V2, uh, if that's something you are interested in in uh, having work, we can talk and, and, and figure that out. But so far, Cosign has been uh, 
an absolute superstar in being able to support this for us. So, um, but yeah, uh, uh, if there's interest in notary, we could, we could absolutely look into it. Awesome. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me do, let me do a quick, uh, demo and walkthrough of the, uh, is that a good size? Is that too big? I think that that's good enough. <laughs> yep. Okay. I made it too big. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, the, I'm in the, uh, the Tekton CD, uh, pipeline repo. So you, all of these examples are things you can go see, um, go see yourself if you are interested. Um, Let's do results with params. So this is a good demo of sort of passing some information from one task in a pipeline down to another one. Um, uh, let's do this without params. Looking at this one earlier. So this is a very, very, very simple task, not really very real world uh, usage, but something that just adds two numbers and then emits the result of those two numbers. So this is the add task or add task. It sounds like an add. It, yeah, it's a task that adds two numbers. Uh, it takes two parameters, the first and the second, uh, and it emits a result that is the sum of those two things. And so how it does that is it runs this one step, which is taken uh, the first parameter and take in the second parameter and the command is to add them together and, uh, write it out to the result, right? Very, very, very simple. It's a bit, it's a bit of a lot of YAML to add two numbers together, but, uh, in, in the real world, uh, this would be, uh, a little more realistic. Um, and so in this pipeline, what we have is, uh, three parameters come into the pipeline the first uh, and then two tasks. One is add the first two numbers. And the second task is add the result of that first addition. This is saying take the task first add, which is defined here and get its result. Uh, and that result is called dot sum. And then add the first tasks result with the third parameter, adding all three of the uh, the parameters together. And then the result of this pipeline is all of the things passed together. It actually also emits the partial sum, which was the first two things. And then all sum, which is, um, the sum of, uh, all three together. And then this is just a pipeline that says run these things with two and 10 and 10. Um, so I will, I will learn how to type Ooh, learning to type. Uh, okay. So I created this pipeline run. Let me see. And it's running. It started eight seconds ago and it's still running. Let me see. is a lot of managed field stuff. You can see we passed in the params two and 10 and 10. We're running this as my default service account and it must finish in an hour. If it can't add three numbers in an hour, something has really, really gone wrong. Uh, you can actually see in the, in the conditions here, two of its tasks have completed. So it's actually already done. So uh, we'll take a look at that in a second. Um, the results I showed you before were the sum of two and 10 and 10 spoilers is 22. Uh, and the partial sum, the, the result of the first two additions together is 12. So um, you can see the original pipeline spec that's just uh, reiterating that in case uh, we missed that. You can see it's start time. The completion time of the first ad was uh, six seconds later. This, this six seconds is probably not um, how long it took to add the two numbers. It's more like how long it took to schedule that pod to some node in the cluster and to have it actually, um, run. Um, this is the name of the pod that was created. If you're, if you're curious, if you need to go in and look and debug that, you can go find that, that pod. This is the actual resolved Alpine image that was used. This is useful in 
in the chains case because you want to, you know, I just said use Alpine. I just said use this image uh, to do this, but we want to know exactly which version of Alpine was used in the execution of that. So um, Tekton records the actual resolved uh, uh, image digest, and then chains will report that out to the uh, out to the world that this was the one that was used. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, the sum of the first two numbers was twelve. We're still in the first in the first task execution. This is what it was asked to do. This is the second add task where it also succeeded uh, and started pretty much immediately after the first one finished. It used this Alpine, which is the same as the one before and it emitted 22 as its result. So um, yeah, uh, let's see. Um, oh, that's, that's the one I wanted. So this is one task in that pipeline. It's XB. Like I said, it, it succeeded. We can show some of the YAML in there, which is finished field stuff. This is this is really why the dashboard and the CLI are nice. I should be using the, the CLI because they strip out some of this sort of uh, Kubernetes um, layer stuff. But you can see it was asked to add 2 and 10. It also only had an hour to finish this task. This This difficult task was finished in under an hour, very impressively. Um, and you can see that it emitted 12. Um, so yeah, like I said, not, a, not a very, uh, real world, uh, hands-on use case, but we can see, uh, that it was able to do those things. Let me see if there's a, another example we want to play with. Um, hmm, do any of these sound fun? Parameterized subpath of workspace, different subpaths of workspace. Uh, let's take a look at the, at when expressions. So, um, yeah, this one uses a, this one uses a workspace, which is sort of a way of passing. I didn't talk about this much, but it's a way of passing the, the, actual file system used in that task to another task. So the first, in that example I showed before, it was um, get fetch. There was a get fetch task and then a unit test ta task. The get fetch task filled some space in the file system with, uh, with the data that it fetched, and then it passed that file system on using a persistent volume into the next task. So um, that's what workspaces are. This one, this task in this pipeline uh, looks for if uh, <laughs> write new stuff. It just creates a file called README. <laughs> uh, it doesn't do very much. And then the check file runs after create file and just checks to see if that file exists. And if it does, it emits a result that says that file exists. So again, this is a pretty um, uh, basic uh, example, but it's basically creating a file, checking if it exists, and then if that result was yes, if the if the file does exist, then echo file exists. So this is an example of a when expression where you could say if I had not run that create task or create file task, then the check if file exists task would have said no, it doesn't exist, and then this next task would not have run to say yes, the file exists. Um, this is another example of doing the same sort of thing with, um, with items in a list. So you can say if, uh, if exists is in, or if the value if exists is in missing, if I'm reading that right. Um, so you can have conditional execution throughout your pipeline. You can say only deploy, uh, only actually run the deployment task if the branch I'm building from is my release branch or my, you know, please deploy this uh, branch. Um, oh, and then there's also an example of a finally here at the end of all the tasks, it says, if the file exists, 
task status was failure, then uh, exit one. So, um, or if check file exists was missing, uh, fail the finally task at the end. Um, these are sort of these are examples we all use in the Tekton um, in the Tekton project for tests. Basically, uh, these are just to, to demonstrate sort of basic functionality of a pipeline. But uh, I think they're also really good to sort of simple use cases that aren't too bo too bogged down in like actual repos that exist and actual deployment workflows. So um, they're a good way to sort of get used to uh, seeing how the pipeline works. Um, and yeah, I don't know if there are more uh, comments or or um, things we wanted to talk about. I have, I think I have one more slide. Let's see. Let's find out. Yep, no comments um, with respect okay. to the demo, I believe. Great. Um, all right. Um, a number of people use use Tekton in production today. Um, one is one is Red Hat. We have a product called Red Hat OpenShift Pipelines, which is is Tekton on top of OpenShift, Tekton triggers and pipelines, and um, uh, we also bundle the CLI and have a, a Red Hat specific dashboard. There's also IBM Code Engine, which uses um, Knative and Tekton via Shipwright. Shipwright is another uh, continuous delivery foundation project that wraps Tekton in a, a sort of single purpose, just build this image um, API. And recently announced Google also um, announced a private preview of Google Cloud Build hybrid pools on Anthos, which runs on top of Tekton. Uh, but we have a lot of users that just run it themselves in their own clusters. And so that's not sort of part of a, uh, uh, you know, finished product that people resell. It's just something that they run inside their own cluster. Um, we have a repo which uh, is is criminally underused called Tekton Friends. Uh, if you are using Tekton, you can go uh, tell us how you're doing that at Tekton Friends. And if you are curious how other people are using Tekton, you can go check it out and see um, how various people are. So uh, highly recommend if you are using Tekton to go tell us how, because uh, that's really, really useful. But um, yeah, I think that's I think that's all I had prepared. I'm happy to to talk about anything else or answer questions. Awesome. I think um, um, just to recap, you know, we talked about Tekton, Tekton tasks, Tekton pipelines, um, the CLI, the dashboard, uh, the uh, workspace. A few examples like you know uh, the basic ones, then the workspace ones, then the conditional execution that you can do with respect to the pipelines which gives you the basic idea of how to use Tekton. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Jason was speaking, I was actually installing Tekton very simply. So I would like to just show you how easy it is to, you know, kind of install uh, Tekton as well. Let me just share one of the window, which is, I believe this. So you can see, um, I just uh, created a Kubernetes cluster. Um, this is Sivo uh, Kubernetes cluster based on K3S. So I just created that and I just applied the uh, the kubectl apply command from the releases. And it just did all of the stuff uh, with respect to from the namespaces, role R back, uh, the CRDs, config maps, the deployments. Obviously, this is the main one, the controller one, uh, the webhook, which Jason was saying that it is doing the additional checks uh, before persisting to ETCD, I believe. This is the one that does that. And uh, then you have uh, the uh, other, some other webhooks which are there. And you can see it is kind of running everything in the, so you have Tekton pipelines and you have the pipeline controller and the webhook which is running. And uh, then there's a different project that he talked about, which is the dashboard. Again, super simple to install the dashboard. It takes care of all the installables uh, with respect to that. And it uh, installs the dashboard and creates a service for that. Uh, which is this, this one, yeah, this one. And then you can access that service. I'll just show, obviously Jason has already shown, but uh, I'll also show because uh, it's kind of working. Uh, Chrome tab, let me see which one was I typed on dashboard. Just a second, yep, this one I believe. Yep. Uh, so this is the one uh, which is the Tekton uh, dashboard, which was, uh, you know, uh, which was there uh, with just 
we are deployed and I just exported it as a node port so that you can, uh, you know, you can view it uh, very easily over here. I don't know if you are able to see the other screen. Let me just check. Or I just shared a single tab. No, you are not able to see the other screen. So maybe the Chrome window can be the better option. I believe, which is, I think, this one. Yep. So this is the cluster uh, that I just uh, created. <clears throat> and so many tabs are open. Yeah, this is the cluster. And you can see the, the getting started page is, is pretty neat. Uh, so this is the Tekton dev getting started. You just have the installation steps that I followed. So I really like when the when the installation steps are simple because uh, I was recently trying out something and the installation steps were, uh, I mean, you know, go here, go here, go here, go here, too many links and yeah. still nothing is working out. So that's pretty painful actually. So I think uh, it's, it's pretty neat and it's getting installed in, in you know, uh, just two minutes, <clears throat> two minutes to create the cluster. And then after that, <clears throat> very less time to uh, create the, um, what do you call it? The Tekton pipelines and the dashboard both. So that's what I did when uh, I also did when Jason was uh, explaining about Tektons and you know uh, how how it actually works. Yeah, yeah, and it's super. I mean, it's it helps it helps for onboarding too. Right? It helps people try it out if it doesn't take half an afternoon to get things set up in the right way. Right? If if I can just create an easy cluster, a small, you know, three node, two node cluster, and uh, apply some YAML, and be up and running. That's like, that's our goal. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, glad, it, I'm, glad, way, it's been, I'm glad it's been good. Yeah, it's good. Uh, by the way, on the CEO marketplace, we already have a Tekton app. So if you if you even do not want to, you know, do a kubectl apply, you can just select from the applica marketplace application and create the cluster and it'll come pre-built with that. Uh, so please share the demo code repository. I think that that demo code repository, it's it, it, within Tekton itself. So you can find the, the Tekton repository and the examples folder should be having all the examples that uh, Jason was showing, I believe. Yeah, I should uh, I should have put more links in this um, uh, in these slides. But uh, Tekton Dev Tekton is uh, is our sort of main homepage website, um, and GitHub.com slash Tekton CD slash pipeline is the is the main pipeline repo. Yeah, there you go. And then the examples directory in there should have um, all kinds of examples of different task runs and different things uh, demonstrating pipelines uh, behaviors. So. Cool. I think um, we are kind of uh, done with respect to the presentation. Uh, and I also got uh, more than 20, 21 responses with the, uh, the Excel sheet, uh, basically, that I have exported with respect to the uh, form that you people have filled, So, which is, which is very good. So Jason, uh, you, can you give me any five random numbers between um, 1 to 21? Uh, oh, just just a second. Yeah. I think I see more people are filling in. So <laughs> all right, good, good, good. That's what I was wondering. Uh, there are twenty three. Yeah, there are twenty three people watching, and I have twenty one entries. So that doesn't make sense. Uh, <laughs> now, <laughs> well, I haven't uh, yeah. I haven't uh, signed up. Maybe I'm gonna win some time. <laughs> <laughs> You're not eligible, right? <laughs> oh no, it's okay. I'll just have to pay for my own so, stuff. So um, just pick a number between one and twenty two. Not one. Uh, five numbers. All right, five, 17, 13, four, and 20. Five, 17. I already forgot the numbers I said, so. 13, 24, and what was the last one? Four and 20, I think. Okay, let's, let's do it again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Five. Yeah, five. And and I'll I'll announce the winner as well. Else I'll, I'll forget. Yeah. All right. I'm very sorry if I called your number the first time and forgot it. Five, 17. So five is uh Hare Krishan Rai. Let me paste the names as well. Yeah, next one is uh 17, which is Shreya Bhatt. Okay, the third one. 13. 13 uh it's um i'm not sure how to pronounce that but it's 
Thyangrajan. Maybe Thyangrajan. Okay. Okay. Next. I think I said four. I think four. Four is Mayank Gupta. And the last one, who's the last and lucky one? 20. 20. And it's in Ingin Diri. Cool. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Awesome. Uh, so that's that's pretty nice. And um, uh, we have five winners. I have uh, given the name, so I'll take them from the stream itself. And uh, um, not very soon, but uh, after the week, uh, you might be contacted by myself or the CD Foundation, uh, who's, uh, uh, how it will be done, because I'm not sure it was decided at the last minute how we are. I mean, CD Foundation was, you know, uh, generous enough to give some swags away, so which is very good. And I always like doing this if it if it happens it's always good uh but yeah jason thank you so much for tuning in and explaining uh on a in a very kind of a basic one-on-one -on -one manner like what tecton pipelines are uh how uh, how you can start from a task then pipelines then triggers and you can you know create a complex kind of uh ecosystem out there which can trigger on top of triggers it can re-trigger your uh cicd ecosystem and also you how you can create the pipelines with respect to the examples examples uh may look simple but at least they explain the concepts just like in a programming mm -hmm. language you have examples and then you create on top of the those concepts you create you know some meaningful functional aspects uh so i think that's that's pretty interesting and uh, thank you so much people for joining in and uh make sure you tune in throughout the week same time 8 a.m pt 9 30 p.m ist it's the daylight savings so it's one hour extra for the indian time zone uh so uh, hope uh, people uh, will be joining tomorrow as well and throughout the week um, all all great session and again thank you jason for you know uh, always being generous to accept uh, whenever i ask you to stream <laughs> that is super awesome so Absolutely. kind of you <laughs> yeah thank you for having uh, me uh yeah i look forward to watching the rest of the rest of the streams this week cool anything else you would like to add to the community with respect to tecton community how they can get involved and stuff uh, no, I mean, uh, reach out, uh, go through, go through some of the docs on tecton.dev, uh, reach out in the Slack. Uh, we have a tecton Slack, uh, people are, are pretty regularly active there. Uh, ping me if you are, if you don't hear back, uh, and I'll try to ping some folks, but, but yeah, uh, uh, look forward to, uh, talking to whoever, whoever's interested. <laughs> awesome. So thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, today we learned about Tecton, a very awesome tool. I hope you learned something about Tecton and you'll be trying it out. You can try out on Sivo Kubernetes as part of Marketplace application. Uh, and if you want to learn Kubernetes, again, sivo.com slash academy. It's me who has designed that complete course and my me and my team have recorded that kind of video, video lectures, all, uh, you know, kind of covering all the aspects of Kubernetes. So it's, it's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, and uh, yeah, stay tuned for the stream. Yeah, the one most important thing that I haven't said throughout the stream is subscribe to the channel so that, uh, you know, uh, that's, that's pretty important to keep me going. So make sure you share the stream, share the complete week with your friends and subscribe to the channel so that, uh, you know, it motivates me to do more and more. There, there are a couple of stuff that I have planned with respect to some uh, new courses and, and stuff like that. So probably, things will get more and more interesting and uh, I'll try to share as much as I can uh, in terms with respect to all the time that I'm having. And uh, yep, just keep watching and learning. That's it's it's always fun. And I get to new awesome uh, meet new awesome people like you and uh, like Jason. Yeah, thanks. Okay, bye everyone. Have a nice day.